evening. It's okay, I'm just turning on my phone. Right. How's everyone today? Hi there, MG. How are you going? Anyway, it's being hot here today. So hot. I had so much I wanted to do today. But every, after everything I do, like say I go and make my bed, right? And I put all my pillows on my bed, all nice. And I know I've got a vacuum of carpet and all that. But after I've made the, my bed, I have to sit down. Then about half an hour later, I'll get up again and go and finish the bedroom off. Then I sit back down again because I'm just so tired all the time. So, pardon me. I'm getting there eventually. I'll get through my housework slowly. Where before I could do, I could do my whole of my, apart my flat in an hour and a half. You know what I mean? That's vacuuming the living room, the hallway, the two bedrooms, cleaning the bathroom, um, straightening all the cushions up and my covers on my sofa, cleaning all my kitchen from top to bottom. Could do it all in an hour and a half, but now it takes me all day. Oh, you got thunderstorms. Oh. My my nan, whenever there was a thunderstorm with thunder and lightning, she used to open the front door, her living room door, well both her living room doors and then her kitchen door to the garden. I would say, Why do you do that now? Said, because if a thunderbolt hits It'll go straight through the house. I went, really? She said, yeah. Well, we never got hit by a thunderbolt, so we never got to see if it worked or not. <laughs> I doubt if it would. But that was her thing. And every time there was thunder and lightning, she'd open all her doors on the downstairs so that the thunderbolt would go through the front door, through the living room doors, through the kitchen, and out into the garden. Now I don't know where I get my craziness from. Um, what are we doing today? Oh yeah, we're going to go on Google Maps first because I didn't do it last night. Finish it last night because someone mentioned it and it was near. It had gone two hours, so I said we'd go on it tonight and do the Google Maps where. We look at the route from the house to, is it Memphis, where he works? To Memphis. You know what I mean? Because people keep going on about, have they checked that route? I think they have checked it. But have they done a thorough check? Have they really, really done a thorough, thorough check? Because if he is anywhere, it's going to be either a new home, Right? Or, that's if he's walked off on his own. If he's walked off on his own, or ran off on his own, he's going to be, they're going to find him somewhere near home. Right? And, they haven't. So, that's why we're saying, people are saying, they need to recheck the area again. But now law enforcement said they won't do no more searches now until after the summer, when the, you call it the fall, we call it autumn. When all the leaves come off the trees again and you can see through the trees better. I thought, well, he, he couldn't find him last time when the trees were all bare. You know what I mean? So... Oh, hi, Janine. Glad to have you here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you for that. <laughs> Some people, especially when I get a bit excited about something, I can go a bit too quick, talk a bit too quick. So I have to keep myself in check 
and I think I kind of like sitting here think you're talking too fast so I have to slow myself down but thank you I love that um yeah so look I'm gonna pull up Google Maps right If I knew where that Yogi Bear caravan park was, I would even go and have a googly map around there. Close up. I don't want that. Uh, let's get... All right. All right. We want directions because where are we? Where's that's where we are. There. There. Okay. That's where Sebastian was last spoken to and last seen. Right. Now you remember last night I mentioned how someone put on a post about how They've seen the gates here, right? And how the law enforcement, Chris had said, law enforcement said, yes, they followed you along the fence line and then cut through the gardens to, to Kelling Road. And I put a comment up. I wasn't being asked her. And she's very nice to come back. I said, no, I said, Chris said that he come out the front door, they followed him, they traced him from the front door round to the neighbour to the left of them, round the back, down to the bottom end of their road, Stafford Court, and all the way up Kelly Road Lane. He's come back to say, ID, you are right. <laughs> I thought, thank you. <laughs> I knew I'd heard something. So is it Memphis he works? Right? We'll get directions. Oh, no, just change this over. Copy. Paste. I'm just going to type in Memphis. I hope I spell it right. Tennessee, USA. Right. Now, we go by car because we know Sebastian wouldn't walk that way. Okay? We know he wouldn't have gone that way. But why isn't it showing me the map? It's got Memphis there, but it's not showing me anything. Oh, for some reason, it won't show me... Give me a map. Let's try putting that in then. What? Yes, we know that's Memphis. We don't want, we want from there. <laughs> God. No. No, it's not going to. For some reason, it won't let, put the map up to Memphis. Okay. Just Go to everything. It's not giving it to oh my lord. What am I doing? It won't <laughs> It won't let me get it. Normally, you type in two destinations and you, phew, the map dot guides you out like it did last night from their house to Clarksville. It did, but it won't do it tonight for some reason. So we'll go back to 108.
Is it gonna give me Yes, it's doing it now. Yes. Oh. So um, let's go to my messages. In Minnesota. Okay. Hi there, Kathy. Tin champ. Do you mean so in too many tubes and not enough Indians? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Gigi. Hello. Um. Yeah. Hold on. I'm just going to pull it up now so you can see. It wasn't let me. It wasn't showing me them. It would show me the map, but it wasn't marking it out. I couldn't understand why. Now it is. Right. So, you got one which is four hours, 41 minutes. And another which is three hours, 30 minutes. Obviously, he takes the three hour, 30 minutes one, because that's the one he says it takes to get home from... Where he works in Memphis to home is three hours thirty some minutes. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, Mississippi is where they are. Yeah. Yogi Bear is in it's not in Minnesota, is he? Because they're in Min they're in Mississippi, but he works in Memphis. He the Caravan Park is about twenty minutes. From what I heard, 20, 25 minutes from where he works. So, but, you know, we'll just look at the terrain around. You can see the terrain around there. You know what I mean? It's all. If you wanted to hide your body, what better place to hide your body? You know what I mean? Even if you just died near this highway, right? You just got all these. Look, it's just fields, uh, trees, and for. I oh, like better fields and trees and forests. Forests, but so many places. You know what I mean? It's and being as he takes that route, well, he take it at least twice a week because he come home on a Friday and go back to work on a Sunday. Yeah, yeah, GG. Yeah, people have been saying that, and we don't know if it has been searched. But like I said, has it been searched thoroughly? Because look at it. This is a route. Right? This is his route from his house, from the house. Look at all this here. Look at all this. You know what I mean? Cemeteries, that's a, a great place to hide the body, believe me. But look at all this. It is so much fields and, and it's probably quite hilly as well. Got hills and everything. So it's ideal place. If you know the area, which he probably knows it pretty well. Well, not the area, but that road and the surroundings from that road. Look at this. There's a river. Look. Look at this. Oh, no, I thought it was a river, a pond, a river thing. Notice it. 
But even so, just coming off, you got you, it won't take long to get rid of a body, dump a body, and then get back up on there. And why was he at work at 5.15 on the Monday morning? When you didn't just when they don't start till 7 a.m. That's what bothers me. Was it you thought, well, you know what? I'm I'm awake now. Point go, pointless going back to my five wheeler. I might as well just go to work. Then I was reading a post someone put up and she done a detailed post of step by step of what, hap what happened. Right, how Sebastian went missing. Hold on a minute. Sorry about that. My cat was in a box that I've got in the kitchen. Yeah, he'll lie there now. <laughs> Because he knows he's just been told off. <coughs> <coughs> but why would you go to work at 5 15? And then, anyway, she's got this detail point by point. Right? And I thought, wow. Has she been taking <coughs> notes? Right? Hold on, I've got to take some juice. It's <coughs> <coughs> your fault. Right, for flipping out, she must have been taking notes because it's so precise what she put in order, how it was put in order. And it said how he got home at 1.30 p.m. on the Monday because he had to wait to get cover. And I sat there and thought, nope, that's wrong. Nope. We know... At between 10 and 11 that morning, one of his colleagues told the management that they was not prepared to work with him, with the crane, because of his attitude. Right? So they took him off the crane between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. that morning. Right? So... He didn't request to come off the crane. He was took off the crane. And then the, the guy said he stormed off the yard at the building site, got in his car and drove away. So why didn't he come straight home knowing that his stepson was missing? Right? Plus, if he was at the caravan park, yeah, his darling wife, Katie, are you listening? His darling wife found out her son was missing. She frantically ran around the house. It wouldn't take long to find something in that house because it's all open plan. It's all open plan. Apart from the bedrooms and the bathrooms, there's no flipping doors. Oh, and the garage door, the door to the garage. There's no doors. So you've got the main door, the garage door, the door that leads into the garage, and I don't know if they've got a back door. No, because the back door would breathe through the garage. Right? So everything else is all open plan. Yeah, exactly. He's been on the phone till 12, 12 a.m. in like, and then he's back in the yard at five fifty. No, 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 no. I know if I went to bed, even without my medication, if I went to bed at twelve o'clock, right? Especially when I was his age. Like, how old is he? About forty something. Forty. 40-ish, I know if I went to bed at 12 a.m., I could go up at 5, 
But it's like, what the hell am I doing? I'm going back to bed for another hour. You know what I mean? There's no way you get up at five and be at work for five fifteen. Because you've not just got up at five fifteen, you're at work at five fifteen. And it takes about twenty, twenty five minutes from the yogi bear to his work sites. So that means he left his trailer at what, say quarter to five? Say quarter to five. Because he's out at five fifteen. No, you wouldn't do that. Yes, there is that little door, a little door by the garage door, GG. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know how how you you get to that one through the garage door. I don't think that actually comes off the house. You can't get to that directly from the house. You have to go through the garage to get to that one. I think. Right. So there's that say three doors. And there's that little door on the side. Right? And I'm going to have to pull up that video again. Not tonight. I'm going to do it tomorrow when I've got a bit more time to myself. Did, did they say Faith's room? You've got Sebastian's on the front. Yeah? And Faith's bedroom was on the same level, but at the back. Right? If that's the case, I can see no windows in her bedroom, for her bedroom. Unless her windows are at the back of the house and not on the side, perhaps they're on the back. But you've got that little door on the side of their house. So where does that lead to? Does it go down to like, um, uh, whatever it is. So, into the cellar. Is that where the cellar is? Where that little door on the outside of their house is? Just down from Sebastian's bedroom window. Right, on the... You take... As you walk past his bedroom window, you take a left towards the garden area. And you've got a little white door. Is that the door to the cellar? Because where's Faith's bedroom window? Is it at the back? Because there's no windows on the side of the house. So it's got to be out the back, hasn't it? So that door can't be leading into a room. That door must be steps going down somewhere. Right? And in that video of that house, I'm going to have to have a better look at the bed. You know when the, that video of the house they do? I've got out there. I'm going to have to watch it and stop it whenever it comes to a bedroom so that I can see what is where. You know what I mean? Because I'm sure I know where Sebastian I'm sure the room that shows one of the rooms is Sebastian's because of where the window is. But then again, the window looks very low. So that might be the back bedroom. Because if you look at the window on the outside of Sebastian's, it's not that low. It's a bit of a high top. You know what I mean? Not high high, but not that low. But in the video, it looks like the window is very low. Right. Gigi, they said if it was locked from the outside, they didn't check. Check it. So did. She hides him in there and lock. I'm not sure if they were meaning his house or other houses. Because I know I heard on a dispatch call, they said, have you checked all the outbuildings or anything like that? And one police officer come back saying, if the doors are open, we check. If the doors are not open, we can't check. Right? So then I suppose I have to put that down as as a callback so that they can go there when the owners are there so they can get it checked. Right? But I should imagine, well, I'd hope to think they did check it, GG. But, 
Look at this way. They are, they were, they are, and, and still are, looking it, looking at it as a runaway. They're not looking at it for any other reason. It, it, it just blows my mind. This investigation should have started as soon as they had no scent from the dog. Well, apart from the one. Apart from one dog. Don't hear it on that uh, dispatch call about any other dog, just the one. Right? But he said there was three dogs all together that hit at the same place. Hmm. Yeah, okay, Chris, we really believe you. You wasn't even there. So, I don't know what to, I, I'd i like to have confidence that the law enforcement are doing their job. And the reason nothing is being given out is because they can't afford to give anything out. And... Eventually, they will do something. But, as I said, look at that one case with those two little boys, Oren and two little boys that went missing from their adopted, who were, whose mum and dad, their mum and dad adopted them. Do you remember? And it was two years later. They never found their bodies. Still haven't. And they charged them. She charged him with the murder. So, and I don't think we ever will find her by this. It's like Summer Moon, we won't find hers. The only way we're going to find hers is if some trekker, some hiker is out there one day with maybe the dog, and the dog comes across something. But then again, they won't let um, Candice and Dong won't let law enforcement or searchers back up on their property. Hmm. Who else does that remind you of? Dong and Candice. Dong and Candice Wells won't let anyone up on their property. Hi there, Cathy. I sure hope it doesn't take that long. It can, though. It can. Especially when they've got no body. Unless someone comes forward, right, with definite proof, which they can follow up on, right, to say such and such, this happened and this is who was involved. They can't, they won't charge you no know, one. They can't afford to charge them. But I'm sorry, I think with that DC department, DCS report, right? Now, if it, if there was nothing bad in it, right, it's a way Seth put it across the other day. He didn't tell us anything. But you remember when he said he made that slip up? Where he said, if I'd known what was going on in that house a week after he went missing, he would be here with me now. Yeah? That was a big slip up. Right? Because he then corrected himself and said what he meant was if he'd known a week before he went missing, Sebastian would be here with him now. No, he's going off. Because he said he was going off what he'd heard from other YouTubers and what Chris had said in an interview once about the bounty incident. He was going off that. I don't think he was. I think he was going off the DCS report. And he just slipped up by saying, where then he's had to correct himself and say, if I'd known this was going on a week before he went missing, he, he would still be here because he wouldn't have gone, hi Tracy, he wouldn't, he wouldn't have been at Katie's, he, he'd have been at his. 
right? Now, last night I was saying how I've got messages which I screenshot from another Facebook page of a woman talking to a, someone else. And this woman said, can I share this on the Facebook page? She said, yes, but just don't put my name out. Don't put my name out. So this woman hasn't put a name out there. And she's talking about her friend who knows the person who put the complaint in to DCS. And it's a family member. And she knew she had to tell someone. And that's what she's doing. She hasn't even told the family that she did it. So, and I know who it is, and everyone's having a go at the grandmother for not reporting it. She did. I believe it is her, right? But I've got no proof on that. Got no proof because no names were said. No names were said. All we know is it was a family member. Family member could have been an aunt. It could have been uh, one of Chris's family members, for all we know. You know what I mean? So it could be anyone, either on Chris's side of the family, Katie's side of the family, or Seth's side of the family. Could have been anyone putting that reporting. But the woman who, was, who she was messaging, she said, she mentioned the grandmother and said, I'm not saying any names. She said, no, 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 she said, you don't have to. She said, it's just me making, in my opinion, she said, I just feel it's the mother, the grandmother. But we don't know. And there's apparently there's gas cam footage as well. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Someone talked to me the other week about how uh, that store, uh, Worsham's or Morsham's or whatever, right? I've got a video here of a guy who went there. Hold on. Here it is. Right. And um, he's gone there. Now, he's been helping in the search. Right? And he, he flies drones. So he's been helping in the searches and all this lot. And he went to this store. And he spoke to the woman who worked there and the manager. Both very nicely said. Both, both. But, listen to this. Ooh, got me so mad when I read, heard this. Law enforcement didn't turn up there to that store until two weeks after, after Sebastian went missing. Hmm. It's just that their video camera, their video cam they use, after so many days, right, we'll start recording again from the beginning. And records over the old video, over the old footage. And um, so by the time law enforcement had got there, it's been recorded over. Right? But there were several witnesses who could still say they saw this car at this place. Why didn't law enforcement go there the first day? They knew Kathy had been driving up by the school because apparently there is footage of Kathy driving up by the school. So they knew she'd been driving up by the school. She said that herself. Right? The school is right, the shop is right by. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> 
I'm gonna take it. Oh no, I'm getting off now. Okay, 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 okay. Bye. I need to get all the way up here. Alright. There's the shop, Beach Market Shirley's tab. Alright. Right, there's the shop. Now, she'd been round there, she'd been round up by the school, so we don't know if she went that way and round, or this way and round, or even up this way. You know what I mean? We don't know which way she went round by the school. We just know she went up by the school. Did she go up this way to Beach Market? Well, this guy had been there, but apparently by the time law enforcement turned there, they got, the video is gone. It's been taped over. I'm thinking, really? That should have been checked day one. If not day one, day two. Right? You're doing all foot searches all around these areas. You're doing all searches all around this area. Right? All around there. So why did no one go and check on that store for camera footage? Yeah. Yeah. So... And it's annoying because it's, it's what f a minute or two away from where we live by car. Five minutes at the most by the time you've, I don't know, got into your car, turned the corners, and dogs are up there in your car and turned. To, you know what I mean? But it should have been checked. For Christ's sake, they've been checking all this area. They checked all this. All this, you can see on that um, video that uh, Nick Barris released when he was talking at the command centre on their big screens, and you see all this area covered. But they didn't go there until two weeks after Sebastian went missing. Hmm. Why? Now, a woman said, depending on what sort of um, camera or works they, what sort of uh, video they use, CIA and all that lot can pull off information from that, even if it's been taped over. So perhaps they have been able to do that. We don't know. But to wait two weeks to go there. No, that should have been done either on the Monday or the Tuesday. Christ's sake, those pulling video cameras from the school and from all these houses and these houses and you know what I mean? And all the lighting, all the lights, everything. So why didn't they go and pull the camera from there? It is ridiculous. It is, Tracy, I agree. And I was so mad when I watched it. So I'm going to play it so that you can see it for yourself, okay? I am at Worsham's. Um, I'll try to uh, see what I can come up with. Um, Got to be very careful because I don't want, you know, to upset the owners or anything like that. Uh, but I've got some uh, questions I need answers to, um, and I feel like I'm not getting them uh, answered, to be quite honest. So let's see how this works out. Still turn around. Hold up. Okay, so I just got done talking to the sweetest woman ever in Warshams. This is my town's most 
local favorite spot just so everybody knows and it's killed me that a lot of stuff has been said about it so i'm gonna lay out the absolute truth right now i talked to her i talked to the owner super awesome people um he was actually in today as it was said to be uh, when i went in um, i've got a recording tony and seth will have this recording and we'll be able to hear it um i will not release it i'm just not doing it it's with the people it needs to be um that being said Warshams has 100% cooperated from the very beginning. The problem we have is outdated technology in the time frame of which the information got to the detectives to come here. It was two weeks later. From that point, their, their camera systems at Warshams only, only record so many days and then it laps, right? And that's nothing to them. They just normally just it keeps it for like six, seven days or whatnot. And it, pushes it out i wish in this case they would have had a server that it backed up to or something but they did not uh i can tell you 100 percent there was two detectives that came up here that asked all the right questions that asked what there need to be and they are actively investigating this 100 percent this is not a joke this is not to be um misconstrued in any way these are facts from the people that are here at war shows I went in, asked her, hey, is it okay that I send a recorded video of you to Seth and Tony? And she agreed, she talked to the owner, and then I started asking my questions. My questions were simply as they were. Did y'all have any recordings saved, and were y'all asked to provide these recordings to detectives or anyone in the search for Sebastian Rogers? And immediately, she said yes. She said the only problem we had, though, was that we didn't couldn't go all the way back to the date they needed, which is the date he went missing. That being said, there was nothing at that point they could do. Now, I can tell you right now on this road four way, Beach High School has cameras. Now, I don't know if they could have an angle where they could see over here. It's something I'll look into. Um, but then that would go through Sumner County and I'm sure if the detectives were here they are on it they are looking at everything I'm I have to make this video for Warshams and this because I've heard so many things and it has drove me nuts and the funny thing is those witnesses that came forward had they just done it sooner not bashing them I'm so happy they came forward but here's the importance of when you have information even if you may think it may be wrong something say it it's okay man what nobody's going to judge you for getting that information out this is crucial you could have it, it, as soon as you seen that called something like hey i did see this that day within that time frame it would have been within the six seven time, uh, days of the time frame and guess what boom done with they've got the evidence and if it happened it happened and we wouldn't be here um now the thing being said we still do not know if that absolutely happened it's the testimony of three people that would swear on it that were identical matching test like the testimony saying they saw this truck and blah 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 that being said taking up for warshams uh on that end this is my hometown this is my favorite place i came up here when i went to station camp in high school i'm 34 now i used to get their biscuits i still to this day do um i love everything about this little general store and so does the town of hendersonville it's a big part of hendersonville um, please do not fault them for not having the technology um, that, you know, or a server. They have the technology, but not having that video weeks later, um, that was no fault to them. Um, maybe it helps them um, understand things a little bit more with their technology, and maybe they do upgrade it. And now they will, you know, be better in the future for it. So if something ever happens again, it may be better for them in an instant something happens. We don't know, but I will not fault Warshams at all. I just wanted to make this video to point out the women in there had told me there's not a day that goes by that they don't think about this young man or he has not been brought up in this store. They will continue to push the word out and they will do everything they can to help spread the word of Sebastian Rogers. And that's all that they can do now from this point is be a, a light for Sebastian. Um, I think that we should squander all this about what, what's, what's going on with Warshams. Um, we will never know um, until there's some other footage from the other area. The facts are they did not have the footage only because it was reported two weeks later. And at that point, the recordings had done lapsed. Anyways, 
Peace. Right, so. It's not the store owner's fault. Uh -huh. They didn't know that a certain car that was parked out on their by their store that day had anything to do with a child going missing because there's probably lots of cars, lots of other people pulling up. No, I haven't seen that yet, Gigi. Uh, oh, God. It's like three hours long and... Well, two hours long, so I'll have to have it on quick speed. <laughs> right. Because there's another video I want to watch as well by that... Um, oh, God, what's his name? Peter Hyatt. I want to watch these as well. So there's two I want to watch. So I might... But see, I tend to watch them things on my TV and I can't quick speed it on my TV. So I'd have to sit and watch it on my laptop. So I might try and do it in tomorrow morning, both of them. Put them through tomorrow morning and have a look at them. And get some notes put down. Because I've heard it is good, but... With that doctor they have on, what's his name? I can't think. He's really good. I keep meaning to buy his books off Amazon. And I haven't got round to it yet. But it's in my... It's actually in my... Uh, where you can put it in your little box. Ready to go and buy it. It's there, sitting there. So... Um... So I will, uh, yeah, I'll do it tomorrow morning. But as I said, I'll sit on my laptop and watch them so I can watch them at a quicker speed. <laughs> and because I haven't got like four hours of a morning because by the time I get up some mornings, because of the medication I'm on, I don't fully wake up till about, well, I'm not fully awake then at, till 10 a.m. And then I get up and I sit and have my coffee. And then I go and get another coffee. And then I'm looking at like 12 lunchtime before I'm either going to get anything done. Right? I'm looking at 12 o'clock, 1 p.m. in the afternoon. So it takes me a while to get motivated. Hi, SRB. You okay? We're just showing... Doing that map time, but we can go over that again in a minute. But we've just shown this video of a guy who went to that store. Here. And how he'd been in there, and he spoke to him. And he's got a recording, but he's not putting that recording out. He's keeping it for uh, Seth and his PR. Right, but what happened is, law, by the time law enforcement got round there, which was two weeks later, they had like two weeks worth of video they could watch, but they couldn't go any further back. They couldn't go back to the date they needed, which was the 26th of February. Right, because their tape, their their video, it goes for so many days, then it starts recording over. Right? And it doesn't get, it doesn't go to a backup. But as someone said, the guy who, runs, who owns the shop is an older guy. He's not very, he's probably not technical minded or whatever. So you can't blame the store. This is down to law enforcement. You know what I mean? down to law enforcement because they didn't go there on the first day. If they'd gone on the Monday, like I said, apparently, right, they got all, the, they got a camera off the school because someone said they've got camera proof of Katie going up to the school. So they've got cameras from the school 
They've got cameras all round here, off the houses. You know what I mean? Off these. Everywhere. But they didn't go and get the camera off here. They should give SRB, yes. Hi, Case, Cass, Casey. Oh, I'm going to let this one first. They should have been checking that right away. That should have, if they checked everything else, what, why did it take them two weeks to get to that store? That store owner isn't to, isn't, hasn't, isn't to know that he's got potential footage there of someone who could be involved in a missing child case. He doesn't know that. No one would. They probably didn't hear about Sebastian going missing until probably later on in the day or even the next day, you know what I mean? When people start going in and saying, oh, have you heard about that young lad, Sebastian, he's gone missing, the aut autistic lad, he's gone missing. I will never understand it either. It doesn't make sense as to why they didn't check, go and check the camera. They checked all the other cameras. Why didn't they check theirs? Now, you'd think they'd be checking the gas stations and the shops because shops, have, all these places have cameras. So that would be the first place I'd be, I'd be going, right, you lot are searching, doing the houses? Okay, well, one officer, two officers at the most, go and check the garage and the shop up there. See what footage they've got. But the reason they didn't check there, I'll tell you why, as well. Yes, Cass is my daughter. Don't worry, I had my daughter-in-law in here the other night. <laughs> And my son said to me a couple of weeks ago, he said, did you know I was, I was, in, I was watching your program, your, YouTube, your channel last night? I said, I wouldn't know if you didn't come and chat. He said, I can't come and chat while I'm at work. I can listen, but I can't come and chat. To my understanding, it wasn't cold in right, all right, cold in right way. That's why it took so long for the, yeah. <laughs> but um no um it should have been checked it should have been checked the first even the second day you know what i mean if they had missed it by one day you could understand but by missing it by two 14 days and the reason they didn't do it is because it was only after about what a week uh, to two weeks, people were putting in, saying they'd seen this car belonging to this person parked up outside this store. And it wasn't just one person, it was several people. But the other thing that's a problem, right, people are not phoning in straight away when they see something. They don't phone in straight away. So perhaps if these people had phoned in on the Tuesday, yeah, and said, look, we know, I, oh, I saw such and such car belonging to such and such person parked outside this shop at this time. And if they had two more people phoning in the same day saying the same thing, perhaps I might have gone and checked, thinking, oh, yeah, we've had three people phoning in saying the same thing. You know what I mean? This needs to be checked out, but they didn't. They didn't check it. And it's so annoying. It's so, so annoying when that happens. So that's what that was about. But as I said, we have looked at the route to his works, right? No, is it going to... Oh, God. It's still going to show it me. No, 
he took it off. He took the guesting icing off. So, but we're just saying, you just look at all this. I know he comes down this way so far, but look at all this perfect place, you know what I mean? And then he'd probably come down here and join onto here. Or is it this route he takes? I think I've just moved it, right? But this is the route it takes. But it's, as I said, we zoomed in earlier, and it's... Look at this place. What the hell is this? You know what I mean? Is that a, like a construction where they're building something? But then again, I'm looking at this, and this was taken in... Uh, oh, no, map data 2024. Imagery 2024. So it's this year, this data on this. It's 2024. So look, they've got this building all around here. You know what I mean? And... Then you got, I think it's going in this way. It's going down to mesh. Yeah. But then you've got all this here, which is like, what? Open fields, is it? No, isn't it? Uh, like where people live, isn't it? Yeah. So it's not going to do anything there. No, it can't be the right place. But then again, you go down here, look. Perfect place to hide a body. I don't know what it's doing that for. It should just carry on down there. But you can see it's like very hilly as well because you can tell by the like how it goes in the shadows and the darkness. That just shows where there's like hills and whatever up and down. One cemetery there, another one there. Perfect. Oh, look at that cemetery! Cemetery, perfect place to hide your body. Oh, sorry, sorry. What am I not doing? I'm not shady. Sorry. Can you see it now? <laughs> sorry. Forgot to share it. Oh, God, what am I like? But like I was saying, it's... You can see, like, where the shadows are, where it goes... He'll... Oh, God, I'll get in there. You know what I mean? So that's thick brush. That's thick trees in there. Plenty of places to hide a body. And to be honest with you... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I've got a habit of that sometimes of forgetting to share it. Uh, hi, Natalie. Yeah, many places to hide something. Well, some woman came on a YouTube channel today and said it's just by pure accident this has happened. Her and her husband are going on a holiday, right, with their... Watching out van, the five wheeler or whatever they use. And it wasn't planned for this site. They were planning on another site, but just so, so accidentally it happens, they are now having to go to Yogi Bear site. They've not said when they're going. 
You know what I mean? You know what I said when they're going. But they're going to that same stop site that they're on. Okay, Kathy, don't work too hard. What's that? Tracing your long. It's an AI picture for four notes. That's a lot of AI. I can imagine it would be easy to miss someone, even with very thorough searches. Yes. That's what I'm saying. That I said this just earlier. I said, it's like some of me in Utah Wales. The only way her body is going to be found, if it's not on the, up on the hill, if it's not up on Ben Hill Road, which I'm a bit sus about because they won't let anyone come up and search there again. Right? But the only way her body would be found is if someone's out hiking one day, got the dog with them, and the dog sniffs it out, finds a bone or something, you know what I mean? So, I just don't want this case to be like that. I want this lad found. So many cemeteries around here. Oh my god. Where are we going? Are we going to Nashville? Yeah, Memphis, I mean. For some reason, it took me another route. That one was three hours, 46 minutes. The first one we looked at was three hours, 30 minutes. Well, I'm telling you now, I will show you that video that Nick Berry's had on. I'll do it tomorrow night, that one. And it shows him at the command centre. And it shows you the distance and the area they have covered. But they've not covered all this. They've not done all this. Tell you now, they haven't even come near this place. I'm not come down here. I'm not doing all this. They prob I'd say they're probably doing from that map I was looking at, I could see it is probably say from there. Not I wouldn't even say they've reached Nashville. Right, but I will show it you tomorrow. Right. I thought they had done a 10 mile. You know that second search they did? They then went further out and they went up to like a 10 mile distance out. So they said. Did anyone hear about a cult-like church in North Carolina? Nope. Not heard nothing. But they definitely need to do another search. And I was reading a post today by Jules, the K9 angler. I'm so mad that it's like they're attacking her and putting her reputation. Not just a personal reputation, but a work reputation in disarray sort of thing. They're attacking her. And I put a comment upon it. I said, Jules, just hang in there tight. I said, they, do, they know they are scared of you. They know you and your dogs, beautiful two dogs, will find Sebastian. And they don't want Sebastian found. And that's what they're scared of. Yeah, but the way they meant it, even Seth agreed with this. He said, 
the way it was put across was we need to go to church and pray. Even Seth said that in this interview. So I don't know. Sometimes someone hears something, but they don't hear it all. They only hear what they want to hear. So someone could have said, yes, um, Chris said to Seth one day once, he needs to go to church and pray. And that was gone, passed on to someone else. And that person's gone, yeah, did you hear how Chris said to Seth he needs to go to church? You know what I mean? They miss little bits out. It's called Chinese Whispers. And it's not right. It's about an hour and a half from where Sebastian lived. I'll tell you what they do need to check the churches for. And I said this in a, a live weeks ago. Was there a funeral going on at that church by them? Right? Was there a funeral going on? Say, plan for the Monday. By them, because the if there's a burial going on, it would have been dug out on the Sunday, right? And what if they now there's a church there, right? What if they knew about this funeral? What if they knew there's a burial going on? Something happened to Sebastian. Where's the best and quickest place to put him? Where no one's going to find him. In a plot. And I do do burials there because if you zoom in, you've got headstones. You can see headstones. Right? So they do do burials, because there's the headstones, not many, well quite a few, but not many, it's only a small church yard compared to the ones I know in the UK, but I said it weeks ago and someone else said it as well, and I'm thinking, you know what, she's right, what if there was a burial going on, that hole would have been dug on the Sunday. Yeah, ready for the Monday. They've only got to pop his body in the bottom of that that hole, cover his body with some enough soil to not be seen. The coffin goes in. Wham. No one's going to think about it. Oh, I don't know about that point, Natalie. I really don't. I wonder if Sebastian actually left the house off. I don't know. I think, like I said last night, if he left on his own free will, and he left without any money, without his phone, without shoes, he left and ran out of the house in fear of his life. And he ran. Right? So, where would he run to? As I said last night, he'd try and run to somewhere he felt safe. Now, would he run back to that old school he was at there, where he used to like to go when he was in trouble? Why? Would he try and get to his dad's? But the only way he knows to his dad's is by the road. So he'd have to follow the road, which I'm sure at about, well, I know where I live, right? I see cars coming up and by me, but past me on the main road at three, especially if I'm awake and I can't sleep. I've seen them coming past me at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. in the morning, 5 a.m. By 5 a.m. onwards, it starts to build up because 
I used to be a care worker in the community, so I know some jobs, we was out there, I was at my house by 6am to get to the first job, because it's like 40, 45 minutes drive away, 45 minutes, two an hours drive, so we'd be out by 6 to 6.15 in the morning. So it starts building up around about 6am, the traffic around there. But you've got traffic going along this main road by me. I don't hear it because I'm too high up. But I do see it. But surely if he can start running towards his father by going the main roadway, would he have not been caught on some camera? It, I, what was it? It took, how long did it take to get to his dad's, did it say? An hour and something, and that's walking. No, no, not an hour. Uh, I'll put it in here. Right. It would take 18 hours to walk there. Well, I said they've checked all the phones. But did they have any other phones that we don't know about? Burner phones. We don't know. Anyway, I also want to try and get through these interviews to be MSP. Their first interview they did not with the um, YouTuber, with the news. Station. All right. So, because I just want you to see how many red flags there is. How many red flags? Why did Chris have to go to the next day to get his RV? What was that? Yeah. Hmm. And why did it take him 17 hours to drive down there? Hold on. Right. Right, sorry. Why did it take like 17 hours to drive down there, pack the van up and drive it back? You could have done that in one day. Doesn't take long to put everything and lock all the cupboards up on the RV, on the five-wheeler. Doesn't take all that long. Right. Hook it up to his truck and drive it back. Why did it take 17 hours? Hi Bernadette. Hi Robin. Seventeen hours. That's a long time being as it only takes three and a half hours to get him down there. And three and a half hours back home. Yes, he spent the night there when he went back to pick the RV up. Yeah, you've got a wife whose son is missing, right? And you've got to prioritise your five-wheeler and spend 17 hours down there, well, there and back. You spend the night down there? No, I'd go down there, hook it up, 
lock all the cupboards up in it, put everything that had to be put away away, hook it up, get in my truck, and drive back. Right? There's no way I'd be spending a night down there. Why did you spend? Just speculations. Hi, I'm just speculating. Speculate all you want. Speculate all you want. Bang again. That's just someone saying that's probably what they feel is about one and a half miles from the home. You know what? I said this a while ago, right? It was at Christmas time. Myself, my son, my daughter-in-law and their two children, my two beautiful grandchildren, went up to see... The Christmas lights being turned on, right? Because where we live, our council are crap and they do nothing for the Christmas season. <laughs> so we went up to another little town, further further the road sort of thing. And I'm not joking, we lost my grandson. We lost him. Right? I said to the mother, you stay here with the push chair, the little ones in the push chair, you stay there. I'm going one way, my son's going the other way, around, like they had this uh, stage, right? Not a big stage, just a little stage where school children were going up and st singing Christmas songs and all this lot, you know what I mean? And he'd been at the front by the barrier, watching that. Then when we turned round, when I said, where's, where's Ellis? They said, yeah, I went, he's not. He's gone. He literally come past us and walked past us, looking for us, but he walked past us. But we didn't know that. So my son's gone one way round the stage. I'm going the other way round. We've come back, not there. I'm walking out towards the back end of the crowd. It wasn't a big crowd, but it's big enough. My heart is literally jumping out my chest. Couldn't find him. I said, make up women's song again. I said, I'm important. Get to the stage. Gave it. They put a call out on stage. We've gone up to the stage and I said, can you help us? And I said, what? I said, my grandson's missing. Do you know, I could not even tell him what he was wearing. I was like, too worked up and too panicked. I couldn't even think of what he was wearing. Right? Eventually, as we're just about to tell him, my son's disappeared. And this guy's gone, hold on a minute. Your son's just gone off somewhere. And he's gone and found his son. Gonna find my grandson by the stage again. I'm not joking. I couldn't breathe. My heart was pounding. It was like out of my chest. I was in tears. Everything because I I just could not fathom him going missing and not seeing him again. You know what I mean? I couldn't. I couldn't cope with it. And then, literally, minute. Oh, wrong. Where am I? Where am I? God, I've had so many comments coming up. My, you know what I mean? They put out another call for another young girl that had gone missing. And they said she's wearing a pink coat and her name's Olivia. Right? I went, okay. Looking around and every little girl was wearing a pink coat. I went, well, that isn't too helpful then. You know what I mean? Yeah. There was a mattress in the garage. And... So, but me and my son went off again, helping try and find this little girl. And even my grandson come with me, and he's, he turned around to me, and he said, what are we, who are we looking for? I said, we're looking for a little girl. Her name's Olivia. She's got dark hair, and she's wearing a pink coat. And we're walking through the crowds. And you know what my grandson said to me? He said, they're all wearing pink coats, Gran. They were, all the girls were wearing pink coats. And my granddaughter, she got a pink coat on, and her name's Olivia. You know what I mean? And I couldn't have eat. There was no way I could eat.
Yeah, CP said the mattress that was in the garage, someone gave it to them and you put it in the garage. Hmm. I don't know. Was it in the garage when the police went, when you went missing? That's what I'd like to know. Was that mattress in the garage when the police came? Because if it wasn't, I'd like to know, well, being as someone gave it to you, why have you got rid of it? And then they couldn't check the van because apparently they had to get permission off her works to check the van. So that, there's the keys, I'll open it, check the van. You know what I mean? It's like those throwing obstacles in the way every time. They can't check the van because you've got to get permission off the work. There was a mattress in the garage. Was it there the day the police went there? We don't know. We don't know. All we know was there was a mattress in the garage and that Sebastian had been said, heard saying that he used to sleep in the garage on a mattress. Yeah, Robin. It's like, you know, when I was on the Nancy Grace show, she asked about the van and said, we can't give you anything about the van because we haven't had any clearance from our works. And Nancy thought, well, it's in the driveway. All I'm asking for is the registration. It's in your flipping driveway. I, she could drive up there the next day and get the registration if she wanted to. So why can't they give her the registration? Too many obstacles, way too many. Where was he one and a half miles away? I don't know. I really don't know about that one and a half miles. The South Tower phone tower in the woods. Interesting. But yeah, apparently they've checked all the digital devices, different phones, the gaming stations, everything. But like I said, we don't know if they had any burner phones. We don't know. So I'm just hoping they have got footage of that car. Outside that store, maybe from a gas can. I heard the mo her, his mother was a real estate agent. I don't know who that is. What phone? What phone was found? I don't know nothing about a phone being found. Hmm. I've heard nothing about a phone being found. This is the first time hearing. Right, let me just put this up. Because I've been trying to get this shown for the last four days. But something else keeps cropping up. So first, just express, I can't even imagine as a parent what you two are going through. How would you describe the situation right now? How are you coping? <laughs> um... Hi, Charlie. Sh Charlie. We're on a constant roller coaster ride of helpless and hopeless and the other emotions all in one, and it's a never ending roller coaster. It doesn't stop. It won't stop until he walks through the door. I wouldn't wish this on anyone. Mm. 
not any. I know we're about keeping hope alive. I'm sure that's in there somewhere. Oh yeah. Is that Always. Home? He's gonna walk through that door. <laughs> and the street will be flooded again with family and relatives all waiting to hug him, love him and that boy's more for him to do with when he comes home. So, so here we are, eight days now searching for him. Walk us through that Sunday night that he went missing. So walk us through. We've got so many people who really want to know, okay, how did this happen? So kind of just walk us through that night. Um, we were out and about that day. We were having a good weekend. Um, we got home. Uh, everything was pretty normal. He was playing in his room. Um, when I told him to go to bed, he did. <laughs> uh, he said good night, Mom. I love you. Um, said good to his puppies. Um, and um, when I woke him up for school, I just uh, stop, 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 stop. Where do you normally wake up around six o'clock? So, were you instantly thinking something's wrong, or were you? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? I'm going to go back a bit. Try oh. to stop it. So, right back. A little bit right. later, I wound up going to bed, and um, when I woke him up for school, he wasn't there. When I woke him up for school, he wasn't there. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. So, in your mind, that's usually around what time? Six, when do you normally wake up? Around six o'clock? So, were you instantly thinking something's wrong? Or were you like, he may just be short? I took a second. Room. I took a second and walked through the house looking for him in case he was trying to get breakfast or something because he did that sometimes. Um, about three minutes in, give or take, I was on the phone with my husband. Can't hold him. Um, he said, "What do you mean, can't?" Him? I said, "He's." And so is that when you call on him? Or what's she? Well, we were home and I in the house, you know, and he wasn't. But okay, well, hold on a minute. And immediately after that, we called the sheriff's department and made the report. And Ran out, outside, inside, hold every minute. When minutes they were here, they responded. You were not home. No, ma'am. I was I was a mother Memphis at the St. Jude project. So it's you know I have an earpiece in and talks to my phone, I have another piece in this. So when she was talking to me, it was like what? I was confused. We talked about where could and we went from Well, let's go back. Sorry, I've got a check. So like, he may just be. Um, a little bit later, I wound up going to bed, and um, when I woke him up for school, he wasn't there. When I woke him up for school. When I woke him up for school. How can you wake someone up if they're not there? Right? 
He can't. Yeah. Well, apparently, Chris said he found the sheriff's office at 6.20. But I know for a fact, on that dispatch call, it said the call came through at 6.30. Thirty nine. I know us parents can multitask, but come on. She can sure multitask. She can read uh, a book that she needs to read up on for her coursework and take and do a three hour phone call at the same time. I know I can't read and talk to someone. You know what I mean? Not when I've got to concentrate on what I'm reading and take it in. Anyway, let's continue. I'll go back to where we was. I just needed to go back to about there. What? I was confused. We talked about where he could possibly be, and then we went from there and led to calling the cops, and here we are now. Within minutes, there you are at the home. Yes, ma'am. It was rapid fire. They had cars. They, they had cars from here down to the to the main road, road, as far as I could tell. So, what's going through both of your minds? I mean, are we panicking? Is this oh, he's probably at a neighbor's house? What are you thinking? No run, runner. He's never run away before. Um. I don't know why. I don't know why he walked out that door. I mean, he, he's a good kid. He's not. He's not a mischievous child by any means. Um, but there's answers to questions that have no answers, you know, or questions. Excuse me. So if Katie went looking for Sebastian at six twenty. She was only gone 10 minutes, so she's back at the house at 6.30, yeah? They didn't make the... Uh, dispatcher said the call came through at 6.39. Right? So she was back at the house before dispatch had even received the call. Well, to be honest with you, exactly. Who lives without shoes? I don't. My grandson might, because he, he goes out to play out the back, by right where he lives. And his mum was like, put your shoes on. And he's out the door, and he's out. You know what I mean? He's quite happy going out there with no shoes on. The neighbours, you know, I don't know if I should be, could believe what the neighbours are saying. Or whatever, you know what I mean? He didn't walk out that door, Katie, no. Cameras, no, no cameras. No one caught him on camera. He never walked out the door, she never saw him do it, and she said the floor, the doors were still locked that morning. So please, the front door locks automatically as you go out of it. From what I understand from them talk. Pag locks. You have to punch in the code to get out, and as you go out and the door shuts, it'll lock automatically. But please tell me, why did a neighbour who saw him jump out the car, I think it was a day before, maybe in the Sunday, no, it was a day before because he went to the post box, their post box. She carried on with the car into the garage. He got the post out of the post box, went skipping along to the front door, then stopped turned round and went back on himself and went in through the garage. 
Why would you do that if you knew the key? Co- if you knew, if he knew the code to the door, why didn't you just go to the door and let himself in the co- door and take his shoes off by the door where they all do? They put the shoes by the front door. Now, if you don't use that front door, why would you keep your shoes by the front door? She said, "Not occasionally he'd go through the door, that front door, but most of the times." It's through the garage, because they come in with the car, garage doors go up, they drive in, they get out the car and into the house. So wouldn't it make more sense to have your shoes by in the kitchen somewhere or by the garage door rather than the front door? If that's the door you use the most, wouldn't it make sense to have your your shoes by that door. Hmm. But he never walked out that door. He didn't. He didn't walk out that house. He's either still in that house somewhere, but if he is, there'd be a nasty smell now. There would be a nasty smell. Right. And so I don't think he's in the house. But I was watching this YouTube today, <laughs> and she mentioned about the balloon. The balloon boy, apparently, his father made this. Uh, watching a big balloon that looked like a, a spacecraft, right? And as he inflated it, the toy to it had broke loose, and this hot air balloon flew off like a spaceship, floating along for like 50 miles till it had landed. But before it landed, they came, oh my God, oh my God, my son's in there. He must have climbed inside the balloon. Right? And it came out that he wasn't in the balloon. He was hiding in the loft. And it was all fake because his mum and dad wanted to do a reality show. Yeah, it would make more sense by the back door. If they're going in out the back way to the garage, to the car, that would make more sense. These two know to get him out of the house alive so could drive a dog, don't pick up on the scent. Hmm. I remember that. Hmm. So, let's continue. It's nearly finished, this one is. Nearly finished. And then it jumps. I think it should... Questions with no answers right now that we are searching for desperately. And we just don't have that. Right, I think it's... Oh, where is it? Is it going to jump into the next one? Yeah, it's coming into the next one. It just takes a, a while to do. Anything that happened that day that you think back and that there might have been a reason he was possibly upset or something outside that could have enticed him to go outside. Was there anything that came to mind? We've been combing over that day and even the weeks before he left and I don't I haven't been able to figure it out he's um that morning he was laughing he was joking everyone we were around that day agreed that he seemed like he was in a good mood he was behaving It'd make more sense if we'd been fighting or he'd been in trouble but he wouldn't have been in trouble <laughs> so, I mean, a, a million dollar question why did he go? And the other million dollar question is how. What about social media? Is there anything that... Yes, Chris. That is a million dollar question. Where? How did he leave that house? He didn't just go out the front door and go, poof, gone. No alien ship come up, cut above your house that night and zapped him out the bedroom. 
So how did you leave that house without leaving a saint? Bearing in mind, he apparently took the trash down to the edge, the curbside, on the Sunday night. So would the dogs not have picked up on his scent going down to the trash bin? I don't. No, they didn't. They didn't pick up on that scent. They picked up on a scent that apparently led them away from the house, down to the end of the road, and up Kelly Lane, up to the construction site, over to a retention pond. Right? Didn't get any sense of him, like, skipping along the pathway to the front door the day before. Uh, going down to take the trash down on the Sunday night and skipping back up the driveway, apparently that's what they said. Law enforcement said that's how they know Sebastian because they can tell by the way he was skipping up the path. His dad couldn't tell it was Sebastian. But law enforcement can. Don't make sense. Right? So, oh God, this... I've been saying that since day one, she overdosed Sebastian. Mm, yeah, that, that is a big possibility, and it's a big possibility perhaps that if she was taking some sleeping aid, say she was on a sleeping aid, right? Because I, I the medication I'm on is to I help me sleep so that my anxiety doesn't play up too much the next day. Some days it works and some days it doesn't. Believe me, it doesn't. There's some days I still want to slap the hell out of people. Right? And perhaps she could have been on some medication for sleep. What if she thought, well, I gave him his medication. It's not helping. I'll give him to my mind. Exactly. Who won away the same night? After having such a great day, it's, you know what I mean? It, it, none of this, what they say in these interviews, make sense. She said he was taking new sleeping meds. Hmm. I'm not surprised when Seth got his results for a log detector test. The theory Seth gave was that Katie. Yeah, but if you watch the other interview on the Pascal show, he said, after he'd done the um, lie detector test, the, the guy who'd done the test was talking to him. And he asked him, he got a notepad out and everything. And Seth thought this guy was going to help him, give him some advice on what to, where, what to do, how to go about things. And this guy, this guy said, what do you think could have happened? And Seth gave him three, three possibilities of what could have happened, right? But he only brought mentioned one, which was the sleeping, overdosing. That's the only one he mentioned. It was definitely, I think he died in his sleep. I went in and to wake him up, or I went in and woke him up for school and he was gone. Yeah, he was dead. That's what she means by gone. He was dead. And being as she went out looking for him at 20 past six, she had from six o'clock. If how do you know it wasn't earlier? Right? But she had from six o'clock till six thirty when she come got back to the house to get rid of his body. And how do we know he's in his bedroom? How do we know he was not in this in the uh, garage sleeping on the mattress? He could have died from hypothermia. He could have been cold in that garage. You know what I mean? Could have been many possibilities out right there. And we won't know. And to be honest with you, it'll be hard to tell even if we found the body. It'll be really hard to tell. You know what I mean? Because how long does uh, Meg stay in the body after the body's deceased? You know what I mean? Are they going to find any ways of finding that out? 
I am curious so if she will be able to move him alone if he passed it home. Yeah. She's ex Navy. She's ex Navy. Hi. She can carry it a, a fair weight. No. No, she wouldn't go through the kitchen to get to the garage. She comes out of her bedroom and walks down a little corridor, a little hallway, then you've got the door entrance to the kitchen, but then just past there is the entrance to the garage. Right? Because then you've got the stairs that go up into the loft area. Just before them stairs is a door that leads into the garage. I believe that's the door that leads into the garage. Or it might be another, like, when you look in the kitchen, there's another room off the kitchen. It might be through there. So she might have to go through the kitchen to get to the garage. I don't know. I think that might be the way into the garage through. Go through the kitchen and there's an entrance. And then there's another little room just off the kitchen. I'll show you that video tomorrow. We can, we can dissect that house tomorrow. Dead weight. Sorry, don't know how else to say. It's quite awkward. It is awkward. Well, I don't know. I've never carried a dead weight. She knows how to carry bodies, yeah? Come on, she's still in the Navy. She, she's still in the Navy. No, she's not in the Navy. No, she gets a pension or something off the Navy. She gets sort of thing from off the Navy. But Seth said she she left the Navy after their divorce. You know what I mean? She could quite easily carry him. So, and especially if he's sleeping in the garage, she hasn't got far to carry him, has she? Oh, she's still in the reserve, sorry. Still in the reserve. Yeah. Well, she won't be in the navy colour soon. Hopefully, I hope she likes the colour orange. I hope she'll like the Pandora bracelet she's going to get. Because, in that, you see how she's rocking back and forth, right? I was trying to explain this. It's like, you know when you want to, you know something, right? And you got someone in that room, and they're talking about something, and you know you want to correct them, but you can't. Because it's a secret. You know something, but you can't tell them. I've been like many times. And I've had to sit on my hands. And I'm sitting there. I'm rocking back and forth. I'm literally sitting on my hands. Rocking back and forth. And biting my tongue and everything. So that I don't tell them. Right. I think she knew what happened. I think she wanted to tell them. But then Chris is stopping her from telling them the truth. And this is a story we'll go by. This is what you'll stick to. You know what I mean? And that's what I think she's upset because she knows what happened. And she wants to tell the truth. Katie, if you know what happened and we believe you do, tell the truth. It'll be one hell of a weight off your shoulders. Plus you'll have got rid of him. Please don't tell me you're doing this because you don't want to lose your man. You know that song, Stand By Your Man? Well, Dolly Parton sang that. And guess how many times she was married? Right? Yeah, it's a way to comfort herself because I feel like she knows what happened and she wants to tell him, but she can't. It's like, oh, God, I want to tell them, I want to tell them, I want to tell them, I really want to tell you. It's like, I've been sworn to secrets so many times, and I've had someone talk to me about something, I'm going, oh, God, I can't tell them, I can't tell them. 
And sometimes I've had to get up and walk out the room. You know what I mean? Because I really want to tell them because they're going on about this one subject and I'm thinking, I can't tell them. And I've had to get up and walk out the room. You know what I mean? He didn't make it home. I don't know. It was planned. But why plan it? If they didn't, if he didn't want Sebastian there, he could have said to Seth, look, you need to take Sebastian this weekend. You know what I mean? I don't care if he's in school or not. Whether you've got him in school or not, he needs to come to yours. No, we can't take it no more. He's coming to yours this weekend. He could have done anything like that, but so it doesn't make sense to say it was planned. I don't think it was planned. I think it was accidental. But by being accidental now and covering it up for so long, 80 days now, or 81 days, that won't look good. That is not going to look good on anyone. You know what I mean? So, anyway, let's continue, shall we? Let's see all the other lies. Come on, lie, lie, lie. Uh, you know, and he wanted to have contacted, understand he was somewhat of a gamer, or what was, he, there was a video game he loved, right? <laughs> Minecraft. Yeah. He loves Minecraft. Um, the, the game that he has is not online. He has the, the um, Switch. Um, he's, we don't, because of how social media can be, he doesn't have accessibility to communicate with folks on the internet. On internet. I mean, I, we have a firm belief that we just don't feel that right now that he's capable of having that kind of responsibility. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he, his phone is locked down, his computers, his game, he doesn't have a gamer tag. He doesn't have online capabilities with games. Um, I mean... We've um, we've combed every electronic, every electronic. I mean, we've cooperated with all the authorities as far as anything they've asked us to provide. We've provided. In... Right. Now, you know what they're going on about how they don't allow, they didn't allow him on the internet and all this lot. Right. Seth dropped it the other night. He was talking about when he's on when Sebastian was online. Yeah. And he said, I only have close friends or people I know and trust. Yeah? One of those people was Chris. Yeah? So, why, when I did this interview, did they make out, I was not allowed on the internet, blah, blah, blah. Why didn't Chris say, However, I do know when he's at his dad's, he goes on his dad's internet. You know what I mean? He knew that he was on his dad's PlayStation. So why didn't he just say that? Still just don't have any answers. Did he have any friends? that could have possibly contacted him in some way on his phone? All his friends at school have been questioned to my knowledge and none of them do anything. With this big question mark vanished. Yes, ma'am. I don't know how to figure out where or why. Um, all right, so let's talk to you about relationship involved because they're the, the biological father is very much involved in Sebastian's life as well. Yes, ma'am. Right. Um, and, and how would you describe that relationship between them? And it's relatively good. I mean, we talk regularly. He talks to his son on a regular basis. Liars. You never spoke to Seth. If anyone spoke to Seth, it was Chris. Not you, Katie. It was Chris. Look at her face. You can see in that face, she's, you know what I mean? I caught that like, just right there. You know? He's involved in Obstacle schooling, okay. therapy, and 
um, I mean, he doesn't have any extracurricular activities, but I can tell you now, if he did, his dad would be in the room. Um, in two different households. And the communication between the three of us is, is great. I mean, yes, we're just like every parent, we all have our disagreements, but in the end, we come together as a team and we work and we come up with solutions that as we best see fit. I mean, he's, I'm almost in contact with him almost daily. Um, let's talk about Sebastian. Tell me about Sebastian. How would you describe him? Sweet, stubborn. <laughs> Um, he loves to help. He loves, uh, running and he loves to do his games and his digits and, um, Uno. Lord, that's one of his favorite games right now. Um, favorite color is green. Um, does he love music? Oh, God, oh. he loves music. An eclectic taste. Collected. I mean, as the, the, everybody knows, the tiger to better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, we got Jam on one hand, we've got Survivor on the other over here. We've got Taylor Swift, and uh, he's got a big crush on her. <laughs> um, I mean, country rock. No, we, classic. Don't we don't. We don't allow the hip hop. Well, he, he doesn't really well, get I into it anyway. You mentioned he loved running. So, did he love the outdoors at all? I mean, would something outside that was somewhat. If Chris wasn't at home, sorry, my mic is near the way. If Chris wasn't at home, he's going on her word. Right? So, but that reminds me of another case John and Candice Wells. John wasn't there the day Summer went, the time when Summer went missing. But who did all the talking? Don. What outdoorsy be enticing so, to him or pulling him outdoors? He loves like when um, when we were in California and the school had this lap thing to gain money. It was a fundraiser, and every year he was. I did this many laps. I did this many laps. I mean, I've got t-shirts where they would write on his back. Every time the kids went around, they'd mark a mark on the back and they'd keep running. And he just had marks all the way across his back. Um, he likes playgrounds. Um, he hates oh, yeah. being dirty. He, he don't like being, being dirty. dirty. Yeah, he's not a, he's not your tomboy style child where he goes up and plays in the mud. He loves animals. He's terrified <laughs> of bugs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. I mean, yeah. even a fly. He's like, sorry, my internet playing up. It's on two bars, so it should be okay. But it's just, I just can't get over it. Is it nerves? You know, when she smiles and laughs, I can't get over that. Yeah, she bit her tongue in this video, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Yes, he did sneak food, and they didn't like him sneaking food into his bedroom. Terrify the books didn't sound like a kid that would what head. No, it wouldn't. Especially, right? Now, my grandson's totally opposite. He loves, is the proper boy boy. He loves climbing. He don't care if he gets mucky. Right? Um, he'll run around without his shoes on. But in fact, in, in the house, he'll run around naked. Naked. And we're going through a stage now with uh, tags. Tags. The other day, he had some money, so I gave him a little purse thing, a little white thing that I bought. 
and inside this wallet was some little, you know, you get the little tags inside. Yeah. He wanted me to cut them out. So I cut them out and he put his out. No, I can still feel them. Look, there's another one. I sat here for 15 minutes with him, trying to cut as much of those tags out of that flipping purse. Because he does not like tags. Scared of the dark too, yeah. I don't know what's going on. I'll have a look. Let's see what's going on. Sometimes. Let's talk too, because he's highly functioning. I know you all have described him as having a form of autism. He does. But just des describe that to our viewers too, as far as his way of thinking of things and maybe how determined he was about certain things or his mindset. He, um... <laughs> He, he's got a stubborn mindset. If he believes it's this, he gets on a one man track and he is just yeah. on it and he is all about it. <laughs> uh, um, but I mean, he's, he's very smart. He's I mean, he, he can play chess. He, he can beat adults in chess. Wow. So he's, okay. He loves, he loves, loves, loves playing games. What about navigation? Like, did he have a sense of direction? Do you think he could have possibly even hitched a ride or gotten a ride on a bus? Oh or God, that's all bit really. Wow. That is a speculation that we don't have an answer for. Just directionally, he knows he could guide you from our house to his dad's house. Yeah. He could get from like this house. I think he can make it up to Culver's ice cream. He can go Culver's. Well, he knows malt. where Culver's <laughs> is because Culver's have malt. Uh -huh. he, he loves malt, extra malt. Yeah. Every time, extra malt. Yeah. How far away does his dad live? His dad lives up by Clarksville. So he could guide him when all the... The elbow coming again. Oh, wow. Okay. See the elbow coming again then when they mention Clarksville. That's the first time he's yeah. yeah. doing another, another interview as well. I mean, if I took him another route, no he, he would not know. He goes up there so often that he knows he knows how to his dad. Swim as far as well. We're going this way, we're going that way. And yeah, I know. Mean, keeps the same thing and it works out. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's talk to because earlier Chris and I were talking and you were saying that there are a lot of people who are harassing both of you. What of any of that? Do you want to address, what do you want to say to any of these people? Oh, diggums, what a shame. People are harassing them. Really? Really, Chris? So who's harassing the searchers? Who's bad naming the searchers? Who's putting threats out there to the searchers to the point where they're backing off? Right, you know what, set, uh, Chris, Jules and her dogs, she's got Sebastian's army behind her. You're not going to get to her. She knows how you play. She's got a flipping army behind her without us. They know who she is. They know what she's capable of, and they will back her. So if you want to threaten anyone, intimidate anyone, I'd leave Jules alone. She's out of your league. Just the... You don't know. And I don't wish you to ever know. I would say, like, everybody has new, you know, it's okay to have that opinion. But you're not in a situation. You don't quite understand. Um, I wish people would step back, take a different wide open view, and not assume. It's not what easy. They know. It's just better to stick to the facts. If they have questions, all they have to do is ask. And I pray genuinely that no one ever goes through this.
just be kind to people. I mean, it's, it's real. Well, years ago, right, I did a martial arts called Aikido, right, and there's a young girl there who had, who's had Down syndrome. She was lovely. She was really, really nice. But because she had Down syndrome, we go that bit easier on when we're putting her down on the floor or throwing her or whatever move we had to do, we go that bit easier. But then when she done it to us, flipping how it hurt. She didn't she didn't hold back. She went in for the kill. Right? And her dad said to us once, can you do us a favor? And we said, yeah, well, don't go easy on my daughter. Don't. I've noticed everyone's doing it because she's got Down syndrome and everything. Oh, we won't do it too hard. You know what I mean? We don't want to hurt her. So don't worry about hurting her. She's hurting you lot. I see her hurting you lot. But don't worry about hurting her. You're not going to hurt her. Which we would not anyway. You know what I mean? Aikido isn't about hurting people. It's about really disarming per a person, putting them down on the ground. Right? So, after that, I thought, you know what, she's hurting my, she's literally putting my shoulder out of place and my, my back was creaking and cracking, you know what I mean? So I thought, that's it, I'm going for the kill now. So every time I was put up against this girl as a partner, I'd go in as hard as I would get anyone else. And you know what? She'd come up to me one week and she'd thank you, I liked, I enjoyed tonight. Because she felt what it was like to go through the paces properly. So after that, everyone started doing the same. And you do have to have patience with them. Oh, yeah. But um, you it's like you've got to think of it from their way of thinking, right? You know, you say, people say, just walk in my shoes. Walk in their shoes. See see life from their perspective. And I'm not joking. Some people must think I'm crackers because I'm walking down the road, right? And my grandson will go, duck! And I'll go, why? He goes, there's a meteor coming. Duck! So I'm ducking down, as I'm walking down the street, I'm ducking or hiding in doorways and things like that. And that's just his imagination coming out. And I play along with it all the time. All the time now, I play along with his imagination. And it's so much fun when you're out with him. And he's going, oh my God, there's, look, there's a meteor right coming. He's going to go. I'm going, no, we're in the bus stop. We're okay. Is it meteor right proof? Yes. It's me too, right, Cliff. Can't get us while we're in here. Oh, thank God. Oh, oh God, that's good. You know what I mean? So, it's just understanding them and playing playing along with them. And some of the things he comes out with, like, I would never have thought of at his age. I really would not. And I said to him, I said, where are you learning all this? Uh, oh, the mushroom cloud. I said, where did you learn about the mushroom cloud? And he mumbled some. I said, have you been watching some on YouTube? And he watches his programs, his, his like Minecraft things and things like that. And um, they go on about mushroom clouds and everything. I'm going... Never in my life would I have thought of a mushroom cloud, which is a nuclear cloud. Yeah, nuclear bomb going off. So, but he was, and he's only six years old. <laughs> but you do have to have so much patience with him. There are some people who have been talking, because I know this is part of the harassment. Um, is there anything you want to address about this child custody situation? <laughs> the previous. So I have a, a current case. 
that is going ongoing in another state. Um, we've requested that case to be sealed because there are some individuals who have taken upon themselves to put stuff out there that they don't quite know, which all they have to do is ask, I'll tell you. Um, but because of that, you know, it's, it has nothing to do with our son. It has nothing to do with this situation. You know, it, I just, people would respect that and keep an open mind. It's totally different. If Sebastian is able to watch, maybe he's watching this as it airs. And if he is, what do you want to say to Sebastian? What do you want him to hear from you right now? Oh gosh, I love you so much. I want you to come home and you're not in trouble. I guarantee you he is loved. And trust me, the open arms are waiting for him to come home. From every parent to every family members to probably everyone in the community. But there's no malice that so we just want our boy home. Bad. Bad. But that mama's heart, I know it's daddy's too, but I feel like there's always that extra special bond. Can you walk us through what you're thinking right now? I just want my baby to be okay. I don't know where he's at. I don't know where he's at. Let's talk about the community because I want you all to know, even, even my church body, I mean, we're all praying. We're all praying for his safe return quickly. What do you all want to say to the community? Thank you. With everything from the bottom of our hearts, we, I would not have imagined how far this has gotten, but there's no way to repay our gratitude, the love that we have felt from the community, the prayer. Did you hear that? I would not have imagined this to have got how far or something like that. Yes, because you was hoping that law enforcement, and it would have happened, was just coming. Okay, it's a wrong way. Let's get the search going, see if we can find him. He can't be that far. He's barefoot, right? So they've got the search going. They've done everything they can in a week, right? They've had the drones out. They've had helicopters out. They've had horseback riders out. They've had people on the ground looking. They've had people on boats. Everything was thrown at this case in the first eight days, right? But then they called, scaled back the searches, right? And they probably go, oh, Christ, yes, they're going to let it go as they run away. But you forgot one person. One person. His name is S-E-T-H. Seth. His father. Right? He's not going to let go of this. He wants his son. And he wants his son home. And you didn't reckon on him being like he is. That's your mistake. But thank you. But From don't stop working. Yeah, please. My son is somewhere. He's home until he's home. Right, we're going into the next one now. This is the last part coming up. So, I think it is. Just check. Yeah, the last so, part yeah. coming up now. Let's, let's mention, it's been on the, the search itself, because we know thousands of miles have physically been traced and retraced. We've got hundreds We've got volunteers, we've got law enforcement from within the state, without, you know, outside of the state. Um, I mean, do you feel like they're doing as much as they can? I mean, you, you've been, you all have been right there in the front 
seat everything that's, that's underway. As far as I know, they're doing everything. Anything and everything has been an option. They have brought in assets and resources from various counties, potentially other states. I mean, I don't know how much more they could do, but we're grateful for everything they have done. They're amazing, but they still haven't brought my baby back. They will. They will. He's out there somewhere. So it's basically it's one getting through this and bringing him home. Yeah. What is the reaction to the fact that somehow he his his image he hasn't been captured on any video anywhere? I know that it was very dark that night. I mean, it gets dark around here at night in general, but um, so far we haven't found him on any camera footage to prove where he's at or where he's gone. I know that they're looking and I went asking everybody and anybody that has cameras, trail cams, mm -hmm. stores, um, <clears throat> to check even from before he went missing just to see if there's anything at all. I understand there, there was a request for video, any sort of footage of Sebastian earlier in the day, on Sunday, before he disappeared. That I don't believe we can comment on right now. I don't, that is not something that I believe we're pervy to at this point with law enforcement. Pervy to. Pervy to. <laughs> You're not happy about them wanting that information, are you, Chris? They want to know proof of life. Did he come home? That's what they want. And the only proof of life they've actually got is him walking out the sky camps. The other proof of life, even Seth couldn't tell whether that was his son or not. He said, all you could see was a, like a little mini hang torch right sort of things you keep in your pocket or your purse or whatever to shine on your door so you can see where you're putting your key on the night time that sort of torch so it's not going to give off much light it really isn't gives off enough light to read a book if you're holding it up towards a book on the night time to read it that's it but you're not perfect to that information, are you? That is something I would, I would definitely direct back to them. But I mean, they, there's all kinds of requests out there. There's thousands of hours of video that they are combing, and we're just hoping they'll find something. And I know this is so sensitive. Yes, you're just hoping he comes home. Are you not? They just want him to come home, yet they don't stay home. Exactly. And the reason she can't stay in that house, because her son died in that house. He died in that house. And that's why she can't stay in that house on her own. Plus, he doesn't trust her because of that rumour going around about her having a so-called affair with one of the neighbours. Right. So keep looking, just no dogs or people are like um on their fam on their property or family own owns own property. Yeah. Is that what they said? Yes, Chris. We'll not allow anyone on the property. Why? Why won't you, Chris? So, it's nearly finished this is anyway. Oh, God, sorry, got there again. It's nearly finished. What do you say to people who inevitably, inevitably end up pointing their finger back at you? We were talking earlier, and, I mean, are you both in the clear? Nope. I can tell you that mom 
myself, and the Father have worked very fully and cooperatively with all agencies across the board. We have anything that they've wanted, we have provided. Um, so cooperation is there. I mean, What do you want to say to our viewers? Anybody who's watching, we've got a lot of folks in this community and in other counties, just throughout the state as well. What do you want to say to them? Help spread the word and keep searching and thank you. And um, just call in. Thank all the viewers, everybody that's helped from across the board. I mean, everybody has been tremendous. Call his name. Yeah. He'll answer. And if he doesn't answer, he'll at least, he'll look, even if he's not being verbal at the moment, because he can talk, but sometimes he don't talk. <laughs> um, call his name. Tell him to stay put. He could be on the move, so keep checking your properties. Yes. I <laughs> The search is never over until he comes home. Well, it's been over for no, you since yeah, the beginning. But thank you for everything that everybody has done, has volunteered, uh, the continuous efforts. I mean, it's like I said, this is, I've never seen something to this magnitude before. Our community is amazing. We're all praying, hoping, and searching. Gosh, to for that day. Thank you both. For Thank you. With me. Right. So we have. Let's, oh, good. Let's mention right. the, the search itself because we know thousands of miles have been. Right. So that's a interview, that first interview they did with WSMV4. Since then, they've done other interviews with YouTube channels. And we noticed a thing with these interviews. That's all with women. No men. Right? <laughs> He's not done one interview. Or she... Ha I think she may have done an interview with a bloke. Yes, she did. She did one interview with a bloke. But he hasn't. And that's the only interview she's ever done on her own. He won't do an interview when there's a man there, when there's a man f asking the questions. But she did. She did that one interview, and she only, it only lasted for about, what, three, four minutes? And then that was the interview over. But he wasn't on that interview. Doesn't that say something? I wonder what is being seen. It's his court. It's his. Uh, it's his court hearings for the custody or visiting rights of his daughter. But something happened. Now this is what I think. At the Christmas, Faith was with her dad, Chris. Right. Sebastian went to his dad's. While Sebastian was at his dad's, his dad said this, he was on the phone for hours, FaceTiming with Faith. Now, when Faith went home, directly in the new year, the mother went and put in a temporary summer, which was stopping him from seeing his daughter. Right, and um, so what happened over the Christmas period? Did Sebastian say something to Faith, who at the time was six, who was six, or did Chris lose it with Faith and give her a slap, like he did the other daughter? Right. She's gone home and told her mother what was said or what happened, and that's why the mother put in that temporary restraining order or something like that. So something happened at Christmas. Then in the, in the January, they've had 
DCS, DCS come out to their home. And then in February, he took the five-wheeler and took it down to the Yogi Bear where he was staying because that's where he's working. Well, it's 25 minutes away, something like that. So he was staying down there because he was not allowed in the home while Sebastian was there. Right? Because of this investigation that was going on. So, I'd like to know what happened over the Christmas, and that is what is sealed. We will not know that because that is he's had all those court hearings, all that all that paperwork sealed. Because JLR was getting too close. Good one, JLR. Thanks. But no, he got there and because he was pulling up information, not just him, other YouTubers were pulling up information about this case. And he had it all sealed. That's why. Because he didn't want no one knowing about what he actually did. Well, I'm sorry, Chris. Nina told us in her own words what you actually did. Oh, before we go, who's this woman, Nina Glass, who is supposed to be coming and helping Seth and Tony? Because I was just seeing a video earlier of her in a court on an assault charge, bodily harm, assault charge or something like that. I'm thinking, Chris, do you, uh, Seth, do you know who this woman is? Please. I know you want help, but get some professional help. Please, Seth, this is not going to work. Again, it's someone that, to uh, that, what's his name, Mathis, Tony, Mathis knows. He knows that uh, Nina Glass. Because when I seen the video on the um, Facebook page, I thought, why is this video being sh shown? It's got nothing to do with Sebastian. But then below that, there was a post, and it had a name in it. And I went, hold on. So I went back up to that video, and I thought, that's the same woman. So why is this woman being pulled into the case with Seth and... Tony Mathis. I don't know what her job will be. Probably she's a hit woman. <laughs> anyway, so many red flags just in that one interview. So, so many. And when they did the next interview, which was creepy as hell, just the hands. Right. I'm not going to show that one because it's all the same information coming out. Just with added little bits on. She just adds on to her story all the time. And I said that. I said after this interview. I said, you watch. When she does another interview, A, he won't be calling her mom. And they will be calling, saying Sebastian's name more. They never mentioned his name. Apart from, call his name. Call him, call Sebastian, he'll answer you. That's it. You know what I mean? They never refer to him. And you know when she did that elbow nudge in that one interview, when they mentioned Clarksville? She did it in this interview when he mentioned Clarksville. So that is pricking my ears up as to think, did they take his take him towards Clarksville way and dump him and put his body up that way somewhere to make it look like Seth had something to do with this? Even though Seth was at work for 12 hours and was on constant camera all the time he was at work. You know what I mean? So... It doesn't make sense... Why does she keep nudging him when he, mentioned, when he mentions Clarksville? 
anyone are doing what your thoughts are that. I've watched that video so many times, I've lost count. And I'm only looking at it again because I'm going back to the beginning. And people are going, we shouldn't be bringing the family into this. We've got to bring Katie into this. She was the last one to see Sebastian, the last one to speak to Sebastian. Chris wasn't there, so he can take a hike, a run and jump off a high cliff. Right? I don't care what he says. It means nothing. He wasn't there, apparently. Right? Seth was at work, so he wasn't there. But Katie was. And that's what, that's why he's protecting her. He says he's protecting her. He's not. He's controlling her. In that interview, rocking back and forth, it's like, I want to tell him, I want to tell him, but I can't. I've got to stick to the script. I've got to stick to the script. Do you know what I mean? She's self-soothing. She really wanted to tell us something. She really wanted to tell us, say what happened. But she couldn't. Anyway, it's, I've been on here two and a half hours now. Right, so I'm going to say good night. Hope you all have a lovely day. The rest of your day, that is. And I will be back tomorrow. And I don't know what I'm talking about tomorrow. I'm going to have to go back on my case notes to see what happened then. Okay, so we can even have a look, maybe, at the route to Clarksville by car. Which route would, if he had walked out of that house, or rang out of that house. Right? Because she keeps nudging him when he mentioned, when he mentioned Clarksville in here, and he, when he mentioned Clarksville in the other interview, she nudged him. Right? And she done it in this one. I seen it. So... I'm going to say goodnight. And thank you everyone for being here. You really mean the world to me for being here. Could you be anywhere else? But thank you. I really appreciate you all being here. And I'll be back tomorrow at 8 p.m. That's my time. So, good night. Thank you.